I'm starting to think it's possible that I've got too much wood. And it's not that all the bays of the woodshed are filled. We still got two to go. It's a little late in the season to fill those, but we're getting there. But dude, I've got all this stuff that can go in there. And then there's this other pile. This is all hardwood. And then that's not to mention the pine. I've just been stacking up the pine for a couple years now, two, three years. This goes way back. And is this black walnut? Anyway, so yeah, I'm not sure I really need more wood. Like there's a lot of wood around here, but what I'm doing today is going to get more wood. It's a dead ash tree job at Melissa's grandma's house. Responsible for maintaining that protection around former. Uh, here's the deal. Eight dead dudes up front. And I guess I can't really cut down the power pole. They've got all kinds of weird lean. I think I want to go that way with most of them. But this one might not agree. It might need to go here. A uh, light pole is a target I don't want to hit. And the mailbox. You even have to just kind of split the difference and... What do you think? Block the road. I think we're going to block the road. All right, step one. Check the street for foot traffic. There was a lady with the dog. Oh yeah, she's coming back, but I think I've got time. Uh, she's still coming. Yeah, I gotta wait for the lady with the dog. Alright, tree two is this bad boy and once again let me just okay we got dog walkers up there it's a really quiet street it's actually a what do they call it a caldy sack like it doesn't go anywhere oh, nice healthy Alright, where are we at? We got uh, two trees down, and I guess, I guess that's number three. Yeah, this would be number three. It's got, oh, it's got some leaves. It's just, oh yeah. Actually, these are roly-polies. They're kind of moving in here. There's uh, sunflower seeds growing right here. Someone planted that. Yeah, we got it. There is uh, one lady with the dog kind of coming, so make this quick. She's still, oh yeah, she's still ways up. Uh, this one's like a little bit longer. I'm telling you, man, the street is dead, though. Right, I get nobody. It's a uh, wispy up top. There appears to be another tree. Or maybe three more over here. This one kind of barely counts. But it's suffering from the same affliction. And I guess it's gonna fall in the pile. o'clock and I got the seven down but number eight's a little bit spicy I really want to put it here just because this is where my mess is but um 
this dude, what it wants to do, like if it had a mind of its own, is to go over here and just create a new mess. Now, <laughs> now there's also uh, power line issues. So these guys have a pole where the power goes underground and I got one, two, three branches that want to hit the pole if I push it this way. I've also got the lean against me. So I'm gonna push it this way. I think if I leave beefy enough hinge and give it a violent enough push, I can break those limbs off and overcome the lean. That sounded like wishful thinking. Just, just that's what it sounded like. <laughs> Okay, I gotta replay that in like a little bit of slow-mo. It looked like it did tickle the pole, but poles are kind of made to be tickled. I might have scraped the conduit just the weeest bit. That's like schedule 900 or something. Wow, that really ended up just a totally stubby mess. I gotta do a couple loads. Uh, I need to mention a couple things. Number one, there was like a, a question about my ground crew dudes Isaac and Eddie you know like where are those guys they coming back they went for like regular jobs Eddie's working at a bank I heard in like Boston and Isaac is looking for a job in like manufacturing or something like some kind of corporate thing where you wear a suit or whatever I don't know I figure they just stay on the tree crew okay I gotta show you the rest of this uh, at this property there are a total of 56 dead ash trees now they are kind of hiding all over the place. There's like this guy has still got some leaves on it. There's like 10 or 12 in there. The eight that I just took out were right there. And in here, it's just like one after the other. I counted them up, uh, 56 dead ones. And the consensus in the family seems to be that all 56 don't need to be taken out. But these ones by the house, like this big bad boy, that's not foliage, that's actually just uh, like Virginia, Virginia creeper vines up the, probably poison ivy too, up the tree. So a couple of these guys, if you can see, there's probably like 30 dead ash trees in here. Just a huge grove of them mixed in with other stuff. I'm gonna get a couple of these. They were like, oh, I take them all out. Just get the ones that are gonna whack the house. Yeah, maybe that one, maybe that one. But you know, there's like seven or eight more right in there I'm not getting. And there are a couple over here I was worried about by the garage. This is actually a tree. It's just covered in vines. That one should go. This one should go. So anyway, that's kind of like on the list. Not necessarily for today. Uh, this afternoon, once I get this mess cleaned up, I'm going to buy a new trailer. Well, not a new trailer. Second hand trailer that I haggled the dude on so hard, like hard haggled. Yeah, no ground crew. Just, uh, you know, back to the huge. <laughs> Alright, so where once there were eight trees, now she's got eight stumps, and I've got a big old pile of logs. Yeah, so this is the new trailer. Picked it up last night, drove it back from Rochester. I still need like something right there. It's a 20 footer, kind of lowish ceilings, like six foot something. Hey, wire it up with LEDs, so I won't be taking too much juice. I think it's pretty cool. Not a tree service trailer, but it's cool. It's okay. It's okay. You're not being replaced. Alright, gotta get over there and take out some more big ass trees. Uh, here's the situation at the back of the property. Dead ash grove thing going on and they kind of go back in. Uh, the main perpetrators I really gotta get out. This one, it's got lean on the house. I don't want to climb that tree. It's just, yeah. Uh, so I'll start popping these guys over here. 
make some room for it to come down here with a bang and a crash. Uh, this one's got to go. Now, you want to see some poison ivy, like some serious poison ivy. Check out this stock coming up. Big old fatty. It's like, you know, size of my wrist. And the whole tree is full of poison ivy. I was about to take that one, but I'm thinking we leave the poison ivy tree. They're kind of not worried about like stuff that's not going to hit the house. And, you know, they told me to just be selective. I'm gonna be selective and leave that thing. I think this can come down. Does it have ivy in it? Oh no, that's that's Virginia creeper, that's good. So that just means I gotta flop this one next. Just crash it through the poison ivy. <laughs> Definitely gonna get crashy and smashy. That was kind of funny. The uh, poison ivy tree was like bent but not broken. You can see all that ivy still kind of wiggling around. All right, let me show you the setup on this one. Uh, the tree itself is kind of buried in here. I'm not gonna clear too much because. These bushes are kind of nice, but I'll kind of dig in there. Uh, it is tied up with a hitch, so it might tick, tick, strap a little bit. And then I'm down there to the mini around another dead ash. It's got a little bit of lean on the house, but not like meh, terrifying. Oh. set up with a pretty fat hinge just to hold. I was really glad not to climb that tree. Uh, collateral damage looks like a bunch of dead ash trees. And this guy's not poison ivy. It's day three on this job. I don't know if you keep a track of days, but it's day three. Kind of moving around the property. You know, started out front with those eight, then worked this area yesterday. Still some crusty buggers back there. But like I said, they didn't want them all out. So today I'm gonna take out just two or three of these spindly dudes. And then I gotta just kind of piece some stuff out in there. It's all vine covered and vines tend to hold stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'll do that next after these. Two, we're definitely striking distance on the deck. Kind of trying to judge this one. It's like you can just keep going back in there. There's so many. 
I think I'm gonna leave that one. It's just, if it's gonna come down this way, the chances are it's just the tips. Just the tippy tip tip. You gotta like leave a little bit on the plate, you know? Hot peppers. These dudes in here, they got all kinds of vinage. And I might be fooling myself, but I don't see poison ivy on this one. I'm seeing grapes. Oh, there's probably ivy. But the deal with the vines is that when they're connected to other stuff, the tree can begin to like go the direction you want it, and then the vines can pull it back, and there's like a garage back here. And I don't think the connection's all that strong. So with this one, let me see if I can get it down over here. It's mildly dicey. Hang on a minute. I knew I saw grapes in that tree. The uh, question is if I can do the same thing with the big boy. I just don't know. Yeah, maybe it's not even super vined up. thinking that if one were to conceive of a how-to video on the topic of taking out some trees at your wife's grandma's place, it'd be like step-by-step -step instructions and stuff. This is just the story of how I did it. Thanks for checking it out.